Hello, David here, and welcome to the basics of visual components. This video is designed to assist new users in becoming familiar with a visual components product. So the best way to utilize this content is to install your software and follow the steps outlined in this video. And this video is a companion to a document of the same name in the Visual Components Academy, so you may refer to both if necessary. Begin by visiting the Downloads page at visualcomponents.com forward slash downloads to download and run the installer for your Visual Components product. Use the wizard to complete installation and once completed, click Finish. Start your Visual Components product and use the activation guide to license the software. Following product activation, use registration to create a licensing account to manage your software licenses and request customer support online. Then start your Visual Components product. The user interface of a Visual Components product consists of several elements. The menu tabs, where a selection of tools and controls are available. The e-catalog, manage sources of component files and load those components into the 3D world. Cell graph panel, provides an outline of the current layout in the 3D world and options for selecting and editing listed items. Output panel, prints feedback on events, commands and other actions. Properties tabs, Properties panel. Edit the properties of a selected object. 3D World. Build layouts in the 3D world using components. Simulation controls. Available from the top of the 3D world, allowing you to start, stop, reset, record, and customize a simulation. Floating Origin. 3D World Toolbar. Control the visuals of the viewport. View Selector Should you ever need to start a project from the beginning, select the File tab, click Clear All and then click Don't Save. Or if you find that the e-catalog and cell graph windows that appear on the left in the Home tab move out of their standard position, from the Windows group on the right side of the ribbon, Click Restore Windows. Click the Help tab, which displays commands on the ribbon to access offline and online help material. To access online lessons and courses through the Visual Components Academy, click Academy. It is recommended to complete the Getting Started course and subscribe to the Academy to receive notifications via email. To access online support or submit a support ticket in online support material, click support. You can log in using the licensing account you created during registration. And you can use the same licensing account to manage licenses online in the customer portal at license.visualcomponents.net. To ask questions, find answers and discuss Visual Components products, from the Online Support Material group, click Forum to visit the Visual Components Forum at forum.visualcomponents.com. It is recommended to register an account to upload and download attachments and create and reply to forum threads. Click the Home tab, which displays a view for building a layout and running simulations in the 3D world. In the e-catalog panel collections view, you can do the following. Expand models by type. A smart collection that uses metadata to group items first by type and then by manufacturer. 
Then scroll down and expand Models by Manufacturer, which groups items first by Manufacturer and then by Type. Both Smart Collections are hard-coded and reference the e-catalog source stored in the Models folder in the public documents on your PC. This directory contains a local copy of the Visual Components web e-catalog and is synchronized with the online library every time you start the application. We will begin by selecting a single component from the e-catalog while learning the basic controls and later we can try a saved layout which you can use to run simulations. Generally, you would use a mouse and keyboard with a Visual Components product. To load an example component from the e-catalog into the 3D world, expand models by type. And then, for example, in the robots category, select Visual Components. Then, from Visual Components, Double click on the generic articulated robot to load it into the 3D world. Or drag and drop the generic articulated robot and use your mouse cursor to specify where in the 3D world you would like to place the component. To fill your view with the selected robot from the 3D world toolbar on the left, click fill selected. Or if your 3D world view includes multiple components. From the 3D World toolbar on the left, click All Brackets Control F. Use the following mouse and keyboard controls to interact with your view in the 3D world. To rotate the camera, hold down your right mouse button and try moving your mouse in all directions. To pan the camera, hold down your left and right mouse buttons and try moving your mouse in all directions. To zoom the camera, rotate your mouse wheel or holding shift with your right mouse button, drag your mouse back and forth. To set center on an object such as a robot tool, hold control and right click on the component or right click on the component and select Center in 3D View. A floating origin and view selector indicates your point of view in the 3D world. The floating origin in the upper left corner of your 3D world view represents the X, Y and Z axes of the world coordinate system. The view selector in the lower left corner of your 3D world view represents six standard views joined together to form an interactive navigation control. Note that the view selector highlights a standard view if it resembles your current view. Top and down views share the same square. One click for top and double click for down. In top view, each click will rotate the camera 45 degrees. As standard views, inner and outer edges can be used to select a view adjacent to two sides. And the corners of a standard view can be used to select a view adjacent to three sides. Before continuing, you may want to clear your 3D world view of any components. As we noted earlier, to start a project from the beginning, select the File tab, click Clear All and then click Don't Save. To load an example layout from the e-catalog into the 3D world, click the Home tab and under Models by Type, select Layouts. With Layout selected, search by typing Machine and select the machine tending layout. Then double click on the layout icon to load it into the 3D world. Note that you can also drag and drop a layout, however you cannot use your cursor 
to specify its location in the 3D world since the layout's default location is predefined. You should now have the machine tending layout loaded into the 3D world. At this point, you can choose either the select PNP or interact tools from the manipulation group in the home tab. In this example, we will use the PNP tool. In the 3D world, left click select the robot in the center of the layout. The selection is highlighted and its attributes are displayed in the component properties panel over on the right. With the robot selected, you can now try adding another machine to the current selection. Holding your control key, left click on another machine to add it to the selection. You will now have two components selected. To remove the second machine from the selection, holding your control key, left click on it once more. Note that if selected objects have common properties, you can edit them if their values are not unique. For example, in the component properties panel on the right, name is a default property with a unique value. The manipulation group on the ribbon contains different modes for manipulating objects. Depending on the context of the scene you are in, you may have tools for either selecting, moving, connecting or interacting with components. The manipulation group tab with up to three individual tools appears in the home, process, modeling and program tabs. The SELECT tool only selects objects in the current context, for example, components in the 3D world. On the HOME tab, in the manipulation group, click SELECT. We will choose the feeder component from the machine tending layout in this example. To select the feeder from the layout in the 3D world, drag your cursor to make an area selection around it. Then click the floor to remove the selection. The Move tool displays an all-in-one tool for moving selected components. The arrows are for moving a selection along a single axis. The squares are for moving a selection in a plane formed by two axes. The arcs are for rotating a selection around an axis. The ring, also known as torus or origin, can directly move a selection to your desired location. The ring can also be used for snapping a selection to an object in the 3D world. Select the cell graph panel from the lower left corner of the application window. Then above, from the machines category, double click on the process machine pro lathe to select the component in the 3D world. With the process machine pro lathe from the machine tending layout selected, from the home tab in the manipulation group, select the move tool which will appear at the origin of the currently selected component. Then in the 3D world, drag the blue square to move the machine along its XY plane. Then press Ctrl Z to undo the last action, returning the machine to its original location. The PNP or plug and play tool is used to plug components into one another creating a physical connection and the plugs are known as interfaces. Compatible components will snap together at their connected interfaces. A selected component 
shows its interfaces as yellow or green arrows. Yellow indicates an available connection, while green indicates an active connection. In the 3D world, from the cell graph in the lower left corner, select the feeder. From the manipulation group on the home tab, select the PNP tool, which displays a ring around the feeder that you can use to rotate the component in its place. Generally, this ring is used to help connect interfaces and deal with angle and distance tolerances for establishing connections. In the 3D world, drag the feeder away from its adjacent conveyor to unplug those components. The PNP tool allows you to move a selected component freely. Then drag the feeder back toward the conveyor until a green arrow points from the feeder that snaps to the conveyor. The Interact tool is used to jog or move interactive parts of components. For example, you can interact with the joints of a robot. Select the robot in the 3D world and from the manipulation group on the home tab, click Interact. The pointer will change to a hand icon when you hover over an interactive element in the 3D world. Then using the Interact tool, place your cursor over the robot's joints and try manipulating them. You can also try manipulating other components in the layout, such as the door of a Process Machine Pro lathe. Or try manipulating some of the other elements of the same component. The simulation controls for running and recording simulations are at the top of the 3D world. The play button can start and stop a simulation. The reset button returns a simulation to its initial state and a zero time. The speed factor and slider manage how quickly you run a simulation. From the simulation controls, click Reset, which returns all components to their initial state. For example, the robot's joints are returned to their initial values. Then on the simulation controls, click Play. During a simulation, components like the feeder create dynamic components that only exist in the simulation. The components generated by the feeder move to the adjacent conveyor because the feeder and conveyor are connected and have paths for connecting and moving other components. This is known as a flow. On the simulation controls, use the slider to speed up or slow down the simulation or double click the slider to reset the speed factor to 1.0. From the simulation controls, click reset. The components generated by the feeder disappear, whereas other components like the robot remain static and are returned to their initial states, as they were when the machine tending layout was loaded into the 3D world. The export image command allows you to capture images of the 3D world. To capture an image, you will need to set up a view to appear in your exported image. If for example, your machine tending layout view is not centered, use the all brackets control F option from the 3D world toolbar on the left. When centered in your view, the layout will appear small. 
To enlarge it, place your mouse cursor over the robot in the center of the layout, and then use your mouse wheel to zoom in until the layout fills your view of the 3D world. Then from the Home tab in the Export group, click Image to display a red boundary in the 3D world. Anything inside this red boundary will be captured in the image, except for any user interface elements. Then from the Export Image panel on the right, select the resolution of 1920x1080, File Format PNG and Render Mode Realistic Shaded. You may want to modify the view angle before exporting your image. Then once you have your view ready, from the lower right corner of the Export Image panel, click Export and save the image. The Export to Animation command allows you to record a simulation as an animation that can be played through the Visual Components Experience an app for viewing 3D content and experiencing virtual reality. Visit the Visual Components Experience page for a detailed user guide and links to download the mobile and desktop versions of the Visual Components Experience app. To begin, from the simulation controls, click Reset, and then from the right side of the simulation controls, click Export to Animation. In the Export to Animation task pane, click Start Recording. Then select the location on your PC where you will save the animation file and click Save. Then when you are ready, click Stop and Save and then click Close from the lower right corner of the application window. The Drawing tab allows you to create 2D drawings of the 3D world, from the geometry of components and contains lines, points and edges. You also have the option to export and print drawings. Standard views create orthographic drawings. With the machine tending layout loaded into the 3D world, click the drawing tab. The drawing tab displays layout drawings including a parts list, dimensions and annotations. A template is used to control the scale of drawings and form a print-ready file. In this example, the machine tending layout includes a drawing that you can clear to create another. So from the drawing group, click Clear. If your view does not refresh correctly to display an empty view, then left-click with your mouse in the view area. On the Drawing tab, in the Drawing group, click Load Template. Then from the Template Import task pane on the right, set Template to Drawing Template A3. And from the lower right corner of the window, click Import. If when importing the template, it does not fill your view, use the All Brackets Ctrl F option from the 3D World toolbar on the left. Then to create a drawing, from the Create View group, click for example Top. In this example, you may wish to increase the scale of the drawing. From the Drawing Properties panel on the right, edit the scale value from 1 to 100 to 1 to 50 and click Enter. Note that to modify the scale of a drawing, you must first select it. If the Drawing Properties panel does not appear, first check that the drawing is selected. Then to give your drawing a title, first select the template. Place your mouse cursor over the lower left corner of the template and left click on it until you see the floating origin appear. And from the component properties panel on the right, add an example title, such as machine tending and again edit the scale value to 1 to 50. Then to complete your drawing, from the BOM or Bill of Materials group above, click Create. And finally, to print or create a PDF file of your drawing, from the Drawing tab over on the right, in the Print group, click Drawing.
The statistics dashboard allows you to report and visualize simulation data. For example, you can track how many parts enter and exit conveyors. For more detailed information on generating statistics, refer to the Using Statistics Templates lesson in the Visual Components Academy. With the machine tending layout loaded into the 3D world, from the Home tab, click the Statistics button to launch the Statistics panel. The machine tending layout already includes a Statistics 1 tab in the panel in this example. We can retain the existing layout and to create a new example, click the green Add New Tab button. Then from Choose Layout, select two column, one row and click Create to add a new tab. And then to select components from the 3D world to include in your Statistics 2 tab, click and drag the panel downwards. To create a chart, displaying the utilization of the three machines included in the machine tending layout, hold your control key and left click to select each of the three machines. And from the statistics panel, select utilization. Then to view data on how many components are generated by the machine tending layout, left click to select the output conveyor on the right side of the layout and from the Statistics panel, select Production Rate. Before running the simulation, notice that from the simulation controls, the simulation time is set to zero. However, we should still use the Reset option to ensure that all the components in the machine tending layout are set to their initial states. Then to start the simulation, from the simulation controls, click Play to record some statistics based on an interval of 60 seconds as specified in the ribbon above. Then as you watch the simulation play, you can see the statistics recorded based on the specified interval of 60 seconds.